you sitting in here? It's late in the day and I have a chicken still in a box. I hope she's not trying to go broody. Let me see if I can get my hand in there. Can I have to see if there's any eggs? Ah! Can I please see if there's any eggs in there? Oh God! Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back. Spring is in the air. It is so close. I got a chicken trying to go broody and a cow getting ready to calf, hopefully at any time. Uh, patiently waiting for that. But tonight for supper, we're gonna have some hamburger steak and some sawmill gravy. If you ain't never heard of sawmill gravy, you're gonna wanna stick around for this one. All right. Let's find us a pack of hamburger. All right, and let's see. I'm thinking some peach cobbler for dessert. How does that sound, y'all? All right, we're gonna get this stuff thawed out in some warm water. Shouldn't take it too terribly long. While that's thawing out, anybody else? Got a sink full of dishes? Yeah, I guess I'm gonna work on that while I'm waiting on this. Let me just go ahead. So I'm looking for ways to use ground beef. So leave in the comments your favorite ways to use ground beef. We're getting another cow processed in April. I, well, of course, we have ran through the steaks and everything, but I have quite a bit of ground beef left trying to use it, um, and I ain't eating hamburgers every night. <laughs> so, uh, leave in the comments your favorite ground beef recipes, if you will, please. But, all right, so we're going to pour this in a bowl. We're going to hit that with a little salt. Put you quite a bit of salt in there, especially this red one's real salt. I have noticed you got to use a little bit more than you normally would. I'll hit that with a little pepper. If you don't use a pepper grinder, just know that peppers and peppercorns in their whole state are very healthy for you. Um, and using a pepper grinder, you still get to uh, those benefits of that black pepper. I'll put in a little seasoning salt. Garlic powder, minced onions, or onion powder, whatever what you got. This stuff right here, I heard a girl on TikTok call it washer sister sauce. I thought that was real good. May have to start calling it that. Hit that real good with that if you like the taste of it. I do. Use as little or as much as you want. We got good clean hands. We're gonna work all that in there. Just make sure it's all mixed up. All right. We're gonna get us an egg and crack an egg in there. Fresh eggs color will come and go with the seasons. Just like cow's milk. Won't be as strong in the winter, but will be extra rich in the spring and early summer. So that's why that fresh egg may look a little lighter than you anticipated. All right. I'm gonna take us a piece of bread. I'm gonna tear this up into little tiny pieces. I want no big chunks of bread in there. Put up pretty little pieces. All right. You can use bread, you can use crackers, you can use bread crumbs. Like I always say, just use what you got. Just use what you got. All right. Get my hands washed. We're gonna let that set for a little bit. Let that bread soak up some of that goodness. Now we're going to pat us out uh, some hamburgers. Some hamburger shaped patties. We want to go ahead and just brown these. Always make sure when you're cooking meat and stuff that you cast iron top before you put anything on it. Same 
ain't gonna be perfect. They're gonna be swimming in gravy in a little while, so. You ain't gonna add no grease to the pan. Hamburger makes its own grease. All right, my hamburger patties are good and browned. Even if they're not done all the way through the middle, no worries, because we're gonna cook them a little more in the gravy, okay? make sawmill gravy with these hamburger steaks. Alright, next up sawmill gravy. You want to know what sawmill gravy is? It is actually, um, you use cornmeal instead of flour and it is delicious. So I'm going to pour me some cornmeal into my good hot oil. I got quite a bit of oil here, that's why I'm using so much cornmeal. Like I said, do it like you do. Your regular gravy. I'm going to let that cook a little bit till that cornmeal starts browning. But you want enough cornmeal to soak up your grease. See there? If your cornmeal ain't soaking up your grease, then you don't have enough in there. That's what we want to see right there. I'm going to let that cook just a little bit. It'll start smelling almost like popcorn. That's when you know you're ready to add some liquid to it. We're going to start adding in milk just a little at a time. Just a little. See how it's making that thicker? We'll eventually end up with some gravy, y'all. And you would think this gravy right here would be uh, gritty, but I don't think it is. I think it is delicious. I love sawmill gravy, and from my understanding, I think this is an Appalachian staple, because back in the day, when they couldn't get flour, they could at least grow corn, make them cornmeal, so they had to have something to make gravy out of. So here come the invention of sawmill gravy. All right, I'm gonna cut my heat back on low. You want to keep stirring this because it does have milk in it so it don't scorch and don't stick to the bottom if it gets too thick add you a little more milk Our sawmill gravy is done. So, back in goes our hamburgers. We're gonna let that simmer for a little bit until these biscuits get done. And I'm just gonna kind of cover some of them up, okay? Just pulled the biscuits out of the oven. I'm gonna put us a little tap of butter on top of them.
You never have too much butter. Cut the heat off of these. Waiting on my corn to get done. We'll be ready to eat, y'all. Peach cobbler's working on getting done. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and get me a plate fixed. Make sure I get plenty of that good looking gravy. Don't look too bad and the peach cobbler should be done right in time for dessert so i'm gonna dig into that and i thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to y'all next time